Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham Presents with me, your host, Valerie, and sometime co-host, Miss Purrington. We bring you articles and podcasts featuring the best in Austin comedy in all its shapes and formats. Started in 2016, the podcast project brings you funny people and their stories. As a fan, I like to delve into a comic's background and motivations, and we usually take a detour along the way. Consider the interview a way for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. I love Austin comedy so much, and I believe in it so much, and I just feel like... The thing about comedy is if you have some conviction, it goes a long way. No, I mean, I don't know. I always love laughing. My dad is a great storyteller, and that's, I think, part of the influence was my father's. He's, he's really funny, and he's a brilliant what would I do other yeah. than be a yeah. stand-up comedian? Yeah. Like, I was always the class clown, but I wasn't ever trying to be. Like, I would just say stuff, and just people would just crack up. And, uh, See, I want the audience to love me, but I don't want to be a clown for them. I want them to love me for uh, my own, uh, for, for what I'm doing on my own terms. No, I, did, I didn't choose being a comedian. It's it's weird. It's like being a comedian kind of chose me. I'm, I'm needy. I know I'm needy. <laughs> but like I need stand up like I need people like yeah. it's I cannot imagine not doing this hi everyone thank you for coming oh you get cookies if you haven't gotten cookies that's part of the swag bag um, I'm Valerie Lopez that was the early voice that you heard, and I am so happy that more than seven people are here, because that was my threshold. And the seven people were going to be all my friends and my, my child. So, and then Dustin, who's, who's recording, and then the, the tech group. So I'm thrilled that uh, you people care about the six-year anniversary of this little hobby that started six years ago. And um, I'm already out of breath and very nervous. And I, I do, this is my thing, is papers. I have papers for everything. This is how my podcast usually runs, is I print a lot of papers to demonstrate to the person that I'm talking to across the table that I've done my homework, I, I can do this. And I had to print even more papers for tonight because I had to prove to you that I, I can do this. Okay, now if you don't know anything about me, um, all my friends that are here know this about me. I'm a math person, so I'm going to be throwing a lot of numbers out at you. So this is our six-year anniversary show. We have anywhere between 227 and 265 total podcast episodes. We, are, we did not have it independently verified by Ernst & Young. Um, but what I do know, because I've been tracking this very, very carefully for the last few months is tonight is my 200th interview since starting the podcast in 2016. Thank you, thank you. And uh, what I, uh, sorry, I have to look at my notes. I am so nervous and today was a very difficult day and I didn't have time to prepare. Okay, so uh, does anybody know what Comedy Wham is besides a podcast? I know this gentleman just showed up tonight. This is like such an honor that you chose tonight's show. And you're going to learn. I'm going to just narrow cast to you. Because all my friends know what Comedy Wham is, because I don't shut up about it. But uh, Comedy Wham started as a podcast, actually started as a blog. And then a podcast was added six years ago. And now uh, we have album reviews. Uh, we have a, a regular column by a lovely comic, Rochelle McConico, that is on our website. And the thing that I think most people, uh, most comics visit our website for is the events page. And you can go to comedywham.com slash events, and you can see all of the Austin comedy shows in one nice calendar view. And we recently added Houston and Dallas. So if you're traveling to any of those cities, you can see what shows are. So that's kind of a cool thing, started as a hobby podcasting, and now it's a big thing. And I, I have definitely not done it alone. Uh, I'm going to pick on you. You ready? So my computer guy, Richard Goodwin, uh, is here. And a lot of the computer, all of the website stuff that you see is, is because of him, not because of me, because all I do is uh, crunch numbers. OK. Um, 
For those of you that remember the very first episodes where I thought I would be unique and do a past episode and then a future episode, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> it was so dumb in hindsight. And it was, <laughs> but I thought, oh, it'll be cool and kitschy. And then I realized how much audio work that would be. And how, you know, some people would listen to the first one, but not the second one, or vice versa. And it's just, and then when Richard started doing interviews, and when Laura Smith, who could not be here tonight, uh, started doing interviews, they were like, are you literally insane for making us do this? And I said, I think I am. And six years later, it's actually true. OK, so uh, we're going to actually call back to that concept. We're going to talk about the past a little bit tonight, and then uh, we'll talk about the future. And you know, it's, it's a little bit wild that some of those first interviews are now big name comics, like Vanessa Gonzalez, who I remember talking to her and now she's touring with Chelsea Handler. And Daniel Webb, he's touring with Margaret Cho. And Martin Urbano is doing all sorts of wild and crazy things in New York City. And you know, it's great to see those, but there's comics that we've also lost along the way. That's why I have my LaShonda Lester uh, candle with me tonight, because she is a spirit of the Austin comedy scene that we lost a few years back. And. Uh, so I think I've rambled enough at this point. I'm ready to get this show started and bring our guests, who are my good pals when uh, my, OK, my, my son knows the story. But uh, I got divorced. And going to Sure Thing nearly every Saturday night was my personal therapy. And so I have watched Sure Thing for years now. And I, you know, they're, my, they're my pals. And I'm, they were my first interview guest. And I'm so excited to bring them back. They have, I, OK, so I have a little quiz, pop quiz for you. OK, so they have each recently started new podcasts. And when they walk on, I want you to take guesses as to whose podcast is which. Uh, one of them, the podcast, is The Stubborn Fellows. And then the other one is Christmas Day NBA Games. And I, I mean, I think when you <laughs> I know this is a terrible thing to say, but I think when you see them walk on the stage, you're going to have a good guess as to uh, who's is who's. Uh, one of the, the, the Sure Thing guys uh, also has an album called Pointless. The album is not Pointless, but it is called Pointless, and it is a superb album. We reviewed it, and you can get it on Sure Thing Records. So I think, oh, and Sure Thing Records actually produces comedy albums. So if you really love comedy and want to consume albums, go to Sure Thing Records. I think I've had way more than enough at this point. All right, so please welcome to the stage my good friends Duncan Carson and Brendan K. O'Grady. <laughs> Yay. Sorry, that went really long. Um, Lizzie? Can you, can you take us to the second page of this uh, slideshow? So if you do listen to the podcast, one of the, the things that I do is I ask all of my guests one word to describe your past. And I just found a free website that I could generate one of these cool word clouds. So it's kind of, kind of fun. Uh, some of the font I can't read, but you know I have cookie over here, which is pretty fun. Uh, this is all of your, your guests? Uh, I th yeah, I mean, it. I think so. So people are yeah. reusing words? Yes, I, they are. They oh. Are. Yeah, so the, I think the bigger words do come from frequency. Is that why my word is so small? It's just the <laughs> only one that says supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> yes. I'm bummed out how many comics said tumultuous. <laughs> Like, I feel that one, too, but <laughs> shut up. All right. Wait, you're yeah. you're, we're, we're already playing this game, but yeah. you didn't try to guess whose podcast is whose yet. Yeah, oh. do we have guesses about whose podcast is, is whose? <laughs> would, it, would it help to know that my podcast is not, in fact, called <laughs> Christmas Day NBA what? Games? That was the name of the episode. Damn it, of, Google. Uh, a show I'm doing with Robert Segovia. <laughs> Uh, called Soft City Rockers that is about <laughs> basketball uh, talk basketball talk from here in Soft City. Oh, USA. Well, I'm sorry. I'll give you another cookie. 
if that helps. Yeah. It will. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, you two were my first guests, and do you do you remember your respective passwords, Duncan? Yours still rings as one of my all-time favorites. Oh, I really don't. It was <laughs> zero recollection. Literally no idea. Now I'm confusing with all the other podcast appearances, but my gut is like, wasn't it just like this gesture? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was pretty close. Uh, yours was oof. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good one. Good. There it is. Onomatopoetic. <laughs> and and it has not been replicated, so it's probably super it's super tiny. small. It's tiny. Oh, that's status yeah. symbol. And my and thoughts the... are too unique for the cloud. <laughs> you know. That's... <laughs> uh, what was what was Brennan's? That's now. Che- I do not know. Checkered. Checkered. Yeah. <laughs> Which, growing up in Orange County, you know. Yeah, that come was on. that. Yes, it, it wasn't that a third wave ska joke. Uh, no, I know. I think that was just me trying to make boring sound cooler. I don't know. It's a poor man's tumultuous. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, che- che- yeah. Checkered. Checkered is in and out of jail without serious consequences. Mm-hmm. Tumultuous is with serious consequences. Yeah, probably. Most yeah, comics so. have been to jail, is the point that I'm making. Yes. Yes. Very interesting. Uh, Busy. Fun. <laughs> well, while you're looking, okay. well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Lizzie to advance to the next slide, because before we talk about like what the past year or two has been like, I wanted to Ugh. recap... <laughs> <laughs> and, and, oh, and and nothing better for a, a podcast than a PowerPoint exactly. presentation. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so with with my two hundred interviews, uh, it has been a wild ride. And the the thing that I want to talk about is, and I'm so mad that Laura is not here because two of them are actually hers. But sure thing, you guys were my first. Martin yeah. Urbano, uh, he was memorable because. Uh, I had never had Red Bull in my entire life, <laughs> and I, when I was, now I just give people water because I learned my lesson. But I asked my guest, you know, what's your beverage of choice? I'll get it for you, and his choice was Red Bull. So I thought, you know, I'll buy Red Bull and I'll have some. Halfway through, I am loopy loo crazy, <laughs> and Martin Urbano is so hilarious that at one point I. Never had done this before, ha- haven't done it since. I did a spit take in the middle of the episode <laughs> on my nice equipment. And so that was a very memorable, memorable experience. Yeah, yeah we got we to gotta talk to Martin because when they say, like, can I, you know, can I get you a beverage in advance like that? I feel like, I feel like Red Bull's a pretty dick move. I feel like you should just say, like, oh, no, water's fine. Like, I understand you're being asked in advance, but, like, you're talking, like, 250 for eight ounces. That's... Yeah. That's that's a pretty bad exchange rate. You are a guest, sir. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is like this is like five years ago. He hadn't even been on Kimmel or whatever. Right. No, he was just a fucking prima donna. <laughs> He's just a twenty-two-year-old really prick. Man. Yeah. I, I also have to mention. I love Martin. Yeah. Oh, we adore Martin. He's the best. I have to mention though that it was fun uh, listening to you uh, prepare to bring us out because you were talking about you know all the great. Austin comics who've gone on to do other things, mm-hmm. uh, who uh, implicitly Gonzalez, HBO, <laughs> yeah, who implicitly are not here tonight. Yeah. yeah. So here's a couple of guys who never moved. <laughs> <laughs> but we, but but I wanted to say also before I forget, just thank you so much for having thank us, you, yeah. and congratulations to Comedy Wham for becoming such an incredible resource for the Austin comedy community. We love Comedy yeah, Wham. Thank you. And yeah. we want to say thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, so let me get through these uh, others. So Jessie Mae Peluso, she's not an Austin comic. She's based in L.A. She was hilarious because, again, if you know me, I'm straight arrow. I don't do any drugs. But uh, she is very, very pro pro marijuana pot, whatever you call, whatever the kids call it. <laughs> and, marijuana pot, that's accurate. <laughs> Mar- is that okay? I don't know. She actually, she came in for Moon Tower, you know, when Moon Tower happened in April, the last time, and she actually celebrated 420 with me. And I thought, oh my God, that's an incredible moment because as she has a podcast dedicated to marijuana culture and just the fact that she was willing to, you know, talk to me at this very important time. It was, it was April 20th. And then it was 4:20. We were we were talking together, and it's wow. a hilarious episode. I mean, how, how many Red Bulls did you have? Yeah, I had none. Oh, I, I thought that was lessons. your drug of choice. Now, yeah. I thought I thought you were gonna smoke weed in the same spirit. <laughs> no, 
<laughs> of meeting your guests where their well, energy is. So it, when I interview <laughs> comics that are from out of town, I always take them to the Driscoll. And that Ooh, Western fancy. Lounge is very cozy and it relaxes people. And I didn't sure. think I could, we could light up in the middle of my school. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the Driscoll is also like, yeah, that, that, that is what Texans want to present ourselves yeah. as being uh, <laughs> like, no, no, we, 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 we dress up pretty good. We're still Texans. Come on in. It's the Driscoll. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have a drink here as opposed to, uh, I don't know, any of the, any of the fine establishments uh, that, that you can uh, clamber out of uh, at 2 a.m. on 6th yeah, Street. Camino, I'll never Camino. forget the first moon tower. Because you had to get your badge in the Stephen F. Austin Hotel, which is very nice. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I walked in, an employee was like, you here for the comedy festival? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm staying here, dude. <laughs> Don't judge a book by its cover. Right. He came back the next day with a suitcase. They were still like, upstairs, buddy, upstairs, bar, go for it. <laughs> okay. S- Scott Thompson, Kids in the Hall of Fame. That was like an incredible interview to yeah. have landed. Crazy. And what was memorable about that one is uh, I had worked through a manager to land him. All of the interviews, I basically hustle to, to land them. And I had, I had done all my homework and diligence to earn, literally earn that one. And I was very strictly told, you get 30 minutes, tops, nothing more. And I think my, my own confidence level changed with that one because at 35 minutes, He's talking, he's like just going on and on. And I'm like, Scott, you know, you you told me that we had exactly 30 minutes and it sounds like we're gonna run long. Do you wanna wrap up? And he's like, No, I'm having a good time. Let's keep going. Buddy and Cole has more time for you. <laughs> <laughs> Did he purr it? Oh, I bet he purred it. Wow. Yeah. He and he Scott was Scott Thompson, t- everybody. Let's we'll pretend he's here. Yeah. Scott listener. Thompson. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Scott. Yeah. That's so awesome. So awesome. And then Lando, okay, so now we get we get to a local who anybody that's seen him, he's just amazing on stage. And he We got was, some Lando heads in the house. I see my yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> He was my opposite issue because I was afraid, if you've ever had a conversation with him, he's just very cut and dry. He's not about, you know, shooting the breeze with you. He's just, yes, no. And I thought, what have I gotten myself into? This man's gonna get me into a 15 minute interview. (laughs) And, you know, this one was in, gosh, I can't even, I think 2020. So I had enough experience by then that fortunately it ended up being about an hour long episode and he was so gracious and open and honest and I'm like again oh my god I this is great I love doing this and talking to people and thinking I'm never going to get past 15 minutes with this person and then <laughs> it goes for for 20 minutes you were like 150 interviews in by then though right <laughs> yeah yeah probably yeah, yeah cuz gosh if that's March 2020 I mean that what happened March 2020 Anything? I don't know. Anything? I think this is all a dream we've still yeah. been having. The, yeah. la- the Lando <laughs> episode came out? Yeah, that's... Yeah. I haven't heard it yet. It's still in my player. Oh, I got it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and then I just... N- last... So in 2020, we dedicated ourselves to the, these online shows, which would never have happened without Laura having an idea and Richard knowing how to work computers. And those consumed all of our time. And I, but I missed podcasting, so uh, last year I, I went back like full, fully into it, and I was so excited. Uh, I, I beat Tracy <laughs> and, got, and was the first person talking to Bobcat and Dana Gould when they premiered their Joyride. And, Human delights. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that was a challenge because I'm used to the hour-long interview, and they, I mean, they were strict. The, they were working with a PR person, and they said 15 minutes is all you get. So I had to really work hard to figure out how to do a short interview. They can't all be kids in the hall, folks. No, they can't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I was going to tease Laura because Avery Moore and Shane Moss were both of hers. And what's memorable about, about those is in both of them, there's either an ambulance going on in the background, <laughs> or we think there was a a techno show happening behind Shane Moss's, <laughs> and it was just hilarious. I think that's just, yeah, I, I just assume that's the background noise that he brings with him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so those are my memorable moments from uh, this whole experience of podcasting, so I'm finally going to turn it uh, to, to you two, Duncan and Brendan. Um, 
what's been going on for you in the last couple of years? <laughs> I don't know. What do you tell your parents? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's this, every week when we're running the show uh, here on Fridays, uh, there's a very like, oh, 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 oh thank you. No, 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 I just mean, like, there's like, everyone has their own previously on the pandemic. And uh, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting because the first year of it, uh, obviously we didn't do the show, a live show from March. 2022, April of this last year, 2021. Look, it doesn't matter what year it is. We didn't do the show. <laughs> we didn't do the show for a year, uh, and I spent a lot of that year actually out of the state. I was staying with my family uh, and collecting unemployment from this state. Don't tell anybody. Uh, suck it, Abbott. <laughs> yeah, uh, but just you know, I was I lost my job. I was working in travel, and it uh, just hightailed Oof. it for a while. And we we would we would talk to each other every couple of weeks maybe yeah we, we still checked in but you know we couldn't really do any of the uh, the projects that we had in the works because mm -hmm. they were gonna be based on live shows and uh, and everyone was stressed out I mean like you know uh, comics are also working people and uh, Duncan lost his job I lost my job mm -hmm. so we weren't able to get a lot of tra oh it's okay it worked out I got yeah, yeah I actually worked out great I uh, <laughs> I got all my uh, benefits, and then on a LARF, applied for the first job that, that paid something, and I got true hired to, at a better paying job. True to form, and, true to form yeah. I didn't get another job for a, a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I work from home full time, this, this I don't have a was, boss, it's ridiculous. This guy was unemployed for a week, like, <laughs> no. but uh, yeah, and then we came back, I came back to town in March, a year later pretty much, and the fallout reopened in April. 2021, and mm -hmm. it's been a very surreal year of like, you know, last June was super crowded and felt like the old days, and then mm -hmm. Delta hit, and we went back to masks, as, as you nice folks are doing, and uh, sometimes vaccine proof. And so it's been like, because like, we're very lucky that our show has always been well attended at Austin Job in the old days, mm -hmm. and here at Fallout since 2018. But, uh, and so it, we don't take it personally, but some weeks it's like, oh, well, only 30 people wanted to jump through the hoops they had to jump through this week. Uh, and it's been very, very much a roller coaster, but we're just happy to help fall out, you know, stay in business and do shows. Absolutely. And yeah, it, Duncan put it correctly, riding the ups and downs of uh, just, I guess, everyone recognizing that, like, we're not in a post COVID era. We are in the COVID era. Yeah. There's before COVID and there's post COVID. And there's vaccines, and there's boosters, et cetera, but there's always going to be variants uh, because we're the most evil country in the world and we're not making the <laughs> vaccines uh, free, to, free to the rest of the world without patent waivers. So, uh, so this, is, this is like kind of what life is. And so having to ride those, those ups and downs, uh, to be completely honest, I don't think we could have done it without a venue that was already exactly where kind of we were. Uh, in, we didn't never had to talk about it. Like when... Austin uh, public health guidelines uh, raised to a certain level based on current caseload. Yeah. Uh, they automatically kick in the request to uh, to the nice folks who come out and support underground comedy uh, to wear masks and show proof of vax. And I know that a lot of comics wouldn't really care. Uh, we're a little bit older. I mean, we're certainly a lot older than we were when Sure Things started 10 years ago. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> um, it but yeah, but we have different responsibilities and, and different stuff in I'd, our life. I'd uh, say, so and we, it's helpful that, that Fallout, you know, is uh, is the perfect partner venue to be where where we would be at. Right. And and it and it just like it, we're we're both old enough that when the pandemic hit, uh, and we couldn't get up every night, it wasn't like a big tragedy. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't go up like every night anymore. Yeah. I'm not 26 anymore. Like when I moved here, if that if the pandemic happened right when I moved here, I would have been. Right, like probably out there trying to do any show that's possible and not and just actively try to will myself not to worry about you know killing other human beings. <laughs> well, Val, you we we talked a year ago, mm -hmm. um, uh, for Comedy Bam's uh, close to anniversary, yeah. Uh, and, and in that, you know, I had said I, I don't blame people who were yeah. out doing mics and things, I don't blame people for anything like that. I feel I feel glad that like I don't feel like I have to go to open mics every week in order yeah. to work on new stuff. I have this show, I have yeah. I have enough kind of experience under my belt that I kind of know how to how to how to work that without having to go to open mics. Still like open mics here and there, but uh, I don't blame people who are like 
at an earlier stage in comedy. You know, you can't turn off your entire life. And so much about being a new comic is being completely in love with doing stand-up comedy and right. just grinding for experience and doing those mics. So definitely don't blame anybody. But again, just being kind of you know older and, and in different places in life, uh, I'm really glad that we don't have to like fight our venue uh, to to put you know certain. You know, doable uh, measures in place, yeah. and I think that even when there has been, you know, 35 people in the room, it's 35 out of out of 50, and that's still a pretty great room, and it sells out more often than not still, and uh, and that speaks to I think the fact that a lot of people in Austin are looking for the same thing uh, in terms of a venue that respects uh, their health and safety. Um, yeah, and and it's know. and it's easy to judge other people, but. Nobody's like, you know what I got into comedy? To learn epidemiology and <laughs> make big decisions about the public health. Yeah, they're fucking dumb. Yeah. They are real dumb. <laughs> I, well, they, 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 they're, they're getting their rocks off these last two years, if that's why. <laughs> well, one but, of the, the cool things that you've also managed to do, you know, since you are called Sure Thing, is you provide a consistently good showcase for people to come to and when you you build around that with your your album uh, company that you know <laughs> I would have thought I would have thought we would have that's seen the term. more <laughs> we would have seen more output uh, from this album. <laughs> yeah, we started an Albert company. We thought that sounded catchier than record label. Yeah. You know, the thing everyone thinks is cool. Ahmet Ertegun from A&M uh, said, don't do it that way. And I said, what do you fucking know, old man? <laughs> Album company. <laughs> uh, we do. Cut I mean, that from the podcast. <laughs> we do. I mean, like, and I feel like this is something that served us well this year. And historically is like to name our show sure thing. And like we, we, we position ourselves occasionally, if asked, as like, we're happy to be here. We're enthusiastic about comedy and sharing it with other people. Yeah. So this attitude of like, ugh, fucking duh, the world, and I'm gonna complain about stuff from stage. That's something we've always had in common is like being more positive in our stand-up and personas. That's, that's also the personality of our show. Yeah. Furthermore, like, if you're gonna do comedy during a pandemic, you better, I don't know, really wanna be doing it. <laughs> You better be really sure of the quality of the show you're putting on. And we've always yeah. been sure about that. I don't know if, if we've ever said this bit of trivia. I, I'm pretty positive we have not on Comedy Wham, but uh, where the name came from. So Duncan's always read it as like, uh, oh, yeah, I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's strange because ever, like Val, you hear it and read it as like consistency promised, <laughs> right? This like, guy asked me about Guaranteed it. to enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Duncan yeah. likes it because of the, the kind of can-do spirit of the, of the phrase. And it's always hit my ear differently just because uh, we pulled it just because I associate it with the thing we pulled it from, which uh, Duncan, I don't know if you remember what it was. I think it was a, I think it was a book of my house. Yeah, you had a book of short plays by David Ives. David Ives, famous one-act playwright of the 80s and 90s. One, which is called and, Sure uh, Thing. Yeah, one was called Sure <laughs> Thing, and that was just, it was a one-act that I did in high school. And so in my brain, it's always been just the play yeah. name. Mm -hmm. I know it's a term, but I, in my brain, I don't hear it as a promise, yeah. uh, either that the lineup will be good <laughs> or that I'll be positive, because Duncan said our stand-up comedy is positive. I don't know that that's true for either of us, well. but but our but our personas are very are are our, our personas and certainly talking about comedy yeah. are are not we we really try not to be like woe is me depressed uh, like we are woe is me depressed angry people but as comedians we're just like dorks because comedy is dorky and yeah. like we're we're excited to show you comics that we like and that's something you can be unabashedly dorky about and so that that feeds in that feeds into the spirit of the show. That's the sure thing guaranteed. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, we are, we're happy to be here. We're happy to be here on this show and what, what, every Friday. What are, you, what are you starting an encore at the Copa? Yeah. What, are, what is this? <laughs> Thanks for coming out, folks. Folks, we've had a lot of fun here tonight. Yeah, it's, been, it's been great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, I, think, I think what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to... See if anybody has a question, because I think we're going to sunset this past part, and then we're going to shift into talking about the future. Any questions? There's from... two Q&A segments yeah, on two. the show rundown list. So mm -hmm. you have an opportunity now and later. 
Or not at all. But, or not at all. But you can't ask past questions in the future. That's right. Nope. You can't <laughs> yeah, do it. Yeah. That's the nature of time. Yeah. When it's in the past, it's in the past. Yeah. <laughs> you can't go back there. <laughs> oh. Okay. Lizzie, are you ready? Yeah. Drum roll, everyone. Something's happening. Star Wars crawl I've ever seen. God, you really can talk to everybody. My God. There are names in here that I have not thought of in a long time. So many comedians. Oh, I gotta call him! Oh. Hey everyone, it's your pal Jeremiah Watkins, and I wanted to wish my pal, Valerie Lopez, a huge freaking congratulations for 200 episodes of Comedy Wham. Oh my goodness, we did it. It's been a long time coming, and it's hard to do anything for this long. I would know. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Valerie, congratulations, pal. Uh, keep it going. I always love doing your podcast when I come into town for Moon Tower, and we will keep the tradition going every year for as long as we can. Love you. Congratulations to Valerie for 200 episodes and for six years of Comedy Wham. It's so cool that you started it back then. I mean, you saw the potential of the awesome comedy scene and just wanted to help it to grow in as good and a loving a way as you could figure out how to support us. You've always been so supportive in everything you've done from the live shows to starting Zoom and what a big thing around the whole country that y'all started off and, and figured out how to help us all to make money and to still get to do comedy during the pandemic and just, you know, always bringing this loving, nurturing energy toward a growing comedy scene and look where we are now. <laughs> Thanks, Val. Oh, hey, Valerie. Love this. <laughs> Dave. Dave Hill from Show Business. Um, I want to congratulate you on your 200th episode of Comedy Wham. Uh, you're from this little hotel room in Florida <laughs> where I'm on the lam. Thanks to you. I'm on the lam because of the wham. I did Comedy Wham a few times. Next time, next thing I know, the feds are up my ass. What's that? Anyway, uh, don't call me. Uh, <laughs> Don't use a landline. Um, we'll be in touch. I, I just gotta get a burner phone. I'll explain it later. Uh, I'm not mad. I'm just concerned. But congratulations, first of all. I just wanna be a free man again. <laughs> hey y'all, congratulations to Comedy Wham for 200 interviews in six years. Like what? I didn't even know there was 200 comics in Austin. I thought it was like 10 of us. That's incredible. Keep going. Y'all make the Austin comedy scene better and tighter with everything that you do. So thank you so much for everything. Have fun tonight. Don't get COVID. <laughs> yeah. That was so much fun. Delightful. <laughs> Dave couldn't bust out a little guitar, though? Come on, no, man. Yeah. He's Production busy, value. He, yeah, he's busy touring with Puddle's Pity Party. Oh. So it's pretty pretty cool. And Vanessa, obviously, is a delight. And I, I was impressed that any of them were willing to record something. A couple of them are pretty course. gettable, let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. What are they doing? We say that is the most gettable. <laughs> You've gotten yeah, us we're, the we're here in the room. We are yeah. the most edible. <laughs> yeah. You think this sending a video is impressive? <laughs> we're always in competition with every other guest. <laughs> uh, Lizzie, can you advance this? Okay, so here is our math and statistics segment. Whoa. Uh, no, this is, this is really just for anybody that hasn't watched or listened to a podcast. These are people I've had on multiple times, but now we go on to the next slide. All right, 
the future. Whoa. So now the words get a little more. You know, this one's always a good one for the future. Mm-hmm. Sure. Death. Uh, erg. I don't remember who said that. Scary porcelain. I think that was a Brett for Fort uh, selection porcelain. But you, but you can tell that most of these happened pre-pandemic because the biggest words are <laughs> yeah. bright, bright, hopeful, <laughs> exciting, <laughs> limitless. limitless. <laughs> Let me tell you something, kid. There are limits. <laughs> Promising. What, uh, literally, like one of the lar- if not the largest, is optimistic. <laughs> Somebody literally said free range. <laughs> I don't know. That didn't work That's, out. No, yeah. no, verbose. Bob this is cat. like this is like somebody time traveled to the past to do a bit in the present. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, okay, well my 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 spiel on the future is is fairly brief. You know, we we had a big big year with adding Houston and Dallas events pages and making connections with people in those cities so that they submit because the thing with our events calendar is it's submitted by comics. So. Yeah. Uh, we don't pick and choose. We just, you know, I try to encourage people to submit their shows. Uh, some people I take deference with, like, I've never asked you to post your show, but it's on there because, you know, <laughs> I'd get shit talk if I oh, didn't. Te- no. From home! <laughs> Nobody would care. Come on, not from us. I mean, technically, I submitted it in like 2012 when it was a previous website. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But <laughs> comics are hard to get to. to do their homework. They are. Sure. Yeah. They are. And you know, as a as a matronly type, I try to <laughs> I wish they would have understood that it's just part of the learning process of promoting yourself, you know, submit to a, a website that, you know, is willing to put your stuff out there and um, you know, some people some people just don't no, there's, or... yeah, th- th- there is something to be said for being completely independent and just doing your own thing. Uh, but, like, Comedy Wham is such an important grassroots thing. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. nobody's doing this for the fucking money. Yeah. Like, you're not doing your show for the money, and they're not putting up the website for the money. Yeah. We're doing this so there can be comedy in Austin. So... Uh, yeah, it's the least anyone can do, but uh, thank you for grandfathering us in. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's important that they take this step, because it's, yeah. you, know, you know, like, I think a lot of people get into comedy because it's sort of, I don't know, easy to do even though your life fell apart because you have executive functioning issues. And you don't have to learn guitar. You can literally just yeah. walk up there and talk. You, yeah. can't, you can't pawn this stuff, as many people have said, and no longer do it. You can just always kind of do it, no matter yeah. how shambly your life is right but at some point you got to submit to the local directory of stuff to get people to come to your shit <laughs> all at right some point, yes. or run it so long they remember to do it for you no. <laughs> you, you better be strung out on heroin if you are not putting that yeah. like like i understand you don't have to pawn your stuff to like do comedy but you better be really fucking high if you can't click send once a week it's the one thing we can all agree on comedy is like like this is the only thing I care about, anonymous. That made more sense in my brain, but thank you, Marcus. <laughs> thank you. And, and Richard has made it so stinking easy to submit shows, yeah. too. So he, he spent, I think, the last year plus of his life making the recent changes, and they're phenomenal. They make my life easy, because I submit as well. Um, but. I don't know what's, what's in our future. A lot of what we've done has been organic. You know, Karina, we had wanted to do a calendar and I didn't want to step on toes. I'm very big on making sure that, you know, I don't do that. So I'd ask Karina, hey, you know, we're thinking about creating a calendar, but we don't want to interfere with what Last Gas is doing. And she's Karina like, I'm runs Last Gas. so done. She was so done. She's like, here. Mm-hmm. She was done with it. Austin, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's living up in Chi-Town now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we don't know what's next. I know I have hopes of you know doing something like this at a festival down the road. Maybe that's that'll happen. Who knows? I mean, the sold out crowd is <laughs> is a leading indicator that I, I'm that's going to happen. Uh, so, <laughs> right, sold out crowd. <laughs> God, what a fire hazard! <laughs> <laughs> the right ones showed up. That's what I say. 
Uh, you know, an, an elephant in the room is how the Austin scene has changed and what's going to happen in the future. You know, if if we could if we could only predict the future and know that you know whatever variant we're in now is the last one. Hmm. Uh, but we have we have such a big scene now, and and you know, from my perspective, you guys were the top of the showcase heap for you know before COVID, and now there's so many competing shows by you know some good producers and some. And now we're <laughs> down in the fucking muck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's why being a sure thing is a good thing. Even though that's you know not, that's not what David Ives was trying to indicate. <laughs> there's, but. No, there there's a. I'll, I'll, I will just say that that uh, occasionally someone will say that they 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 love doing our show and and you take that to heart and like honestly, uh, there are times when you're the only show going and you know that gets you attention. There are times when you go on a good run when you know the right people drop in whatever and generates attention. Uh, but really just doing your thing is the reason to be doing your thing. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's not good for a comedy scene if there's only one good comedy show. Like, a healthy good comedy scene should have, like, other shows that are, like, hot and doing well and have great crowds showing up or getting good bookings, whatever it is. So, uh, I don't I Just, you know, you, you, say, you mentioned, like, being top of the heap, which is, which is you know... <laughs> Uh, a, a fun, cute, cute thing. Like we're 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 only like top of number of years the show has been running, and that's like <laughs> that's something that I will hang my hat on. Just being able to like say that that you know we've been doing it for ten years, even though we've had to take a year off for COVID and had a venue change. Um, but it, it really just speaks to how good the scene has been. That I mean, there are, there are times when like you know your best bet is you know you can go see a fucking free show on Wednesdays at Buzz Mill that will be fucking fantastic yeah. and we'll, and we'll have the same kind of fun buzz that like sure thing had when it was new at the old you know DIY coffee shop <laughs> space you mm -hmm. know um, and then there are other times when like I when you know I wouldn't want to be anywhere in the world other than at our show on a Friday night today yeah um, and and that's. And and that's to say, many many other shows have that too, and that's that's why the comedy scene stays so great. The thing that we're, that you called an elephant is that there's yeah. not really a comedy scene in Austin anymore. Uh, there's 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 three or four. Yeah. yeah, like three or four, and <laughs> yeah. and I do I don't know. I'm curious because like I remember like last year we were talking and you said like what kind of impact do you think like Joe Rogan moving yeah. here will have? And I was like. Fucking none. He's not going to be at yeah. Mike's. Who gives a shit? Um, <laughs> I'll tell you, I've had to answer that question a bunch. Yeah, but, but people ask it. People ask it because That's because the biggest consequence. Yeah, yeah like yeah. We, we we really did become like the town that everybody who like couldn't get booked at Flappers at Burbank <laughs> because they were too racist in the three minutes they had uh, came to. Which uh, that is like a lot of the people who moved here. Uh, I, I will say that it's, and I don't even like name names or sh show names because I don't even fucking know what they are. I know that they're big enough that they have like a following that can go to them, and that that you know Austin has grown in population uh, enough that like people will go to things in general. Um, but I don't know what they are. I, I will say that hopefully, you know, like the, the the shows that we're talking about, the comics that you talk to on this show, uh, you know, that those are the people who are kind of keyed into what I would say is the consistent main line of the history of Austin comedy. Of like the, the, the people, there, there's a straight line from people doing it here in the 80s and 90s through today, mm -hmm. and that goes through established venues, um, and even just venues that have been established through their own era, like I think you know Fallout is obviously one of the best venues in town right now, yeah. uh, but Cap City Comedy Club, the, the Velveeta Room, uh, et cetera, you're not going to see a lot of these other, you know, side scenes. You're not going to see a lot of those people making their way into, quote unquote, the mainstream of Austin comedy. And I guess more power to them for doing their thing, other than a lot of them seem like monsters. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who they, I don't know them. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Rogan can only tour with one or two people. So there's not. <laughs> yeah, you guys are debasing yourselves for what? <laughs> That's like a, what are you getting discounts on P90X when you buy as a group? <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's uh, but and it still feels like we're in an in between sort of place because like Cap City doesn't even reopen until March or something. Yeah. So a lot of people are like, "Oh, what's it like?" And I'm like, "I don't know. It's just like a whole shadow scene here that I've 
not visited because I have my show and I don't care. <laughs> There, there was I a wish com- them well. Okay. Yeah, there, there was a comic in from Ireland uh, Dave, named uh, Dave Nihill, who uh, he's an Irish comic who's lived in the states for a few years, and he came to Austin and ended up doing like every show, like literally every show in town that he could get on, mm-hmm. and that's like fine if you're an Irish guy and you don't really have to, you know, commit to any of these people in social uh, situations for for longer than a couple of weeks. But he stayed here for a good amount of time, and I don't think it'd be betraying anything to, to say that like kind of chatting him up like. He he definitely did say like oh yeah you can you can tell the people who like moved here recently and are doing their own thing huh. for a very particular audience and it's not as fun like yeah. I mean I, I I imagine Dave has fun everywhere uh, that's just what he is uh, and seemingly sober most of the time which is strange for uh, <laughs> for our folk but uh, but but yeah but he, but he, I, I I he could say he he said he could tell. He could tell the difference between like, oh, I'm at one of the the real Austin comedy shows, or I'm at one of the new Austin comedy shows. And that's not to say there's not other good new shows starting, but yeah. we're talking about these these bifurcated the bifurcated comedy scene. You know? yeah. Um and honestly, I wish I named I wish I knew names, I wish I knew shows, I wish I could shit on these people, but like I just literally don't have nothing to do with them. And <laughs> it's honestly kinda nice. <laughs> yeah, like, cause, and like, in, in like, there's no way to get through this without sounding, sounding like our show within the local pre-pandemic scenes is kind of a big deal that people mm-hmm. would prefer to do than not to have done. So there's always just you know, some, often I would, people would know who I was, and I was like, Steve, was it? Uh, <laughs> and I try to be good about that, so it bothered me. And now it's like I've had more than one conversation. Where the dude will just assume that I also moved here within the last two years. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Somebody was literally like, "Yeah, it seems like the old scene's kind of uptight about stuff." I'm like, "Oh, yes." <laughs> uptight about shit like getting vaccinated. <laughs> yeah, about, about not having done comedy. You guys for the are first. seems like these those old timers are real uptight about the N word. It's weird. <laughs> Those two things usually correspond, <laughs> funny enough. But that, like, and, but when they ask me, I'll just be really like, oh, oh, 10 years. I moved here 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of them. Ha-ha. Yeah, and I, I got to be honest, like, you know, I, I will definitely say that my perspective, like, I just did not expect, I didn't know how many people came here. I didn't know how, how many of them were running shows and drawing crowds, et cetera. Um, so I guess I did under, kind of underestimate that, which I guess I'm sorry, Austin, the city that like I've moved to and have loved for 12 plus years mm-hmm. uh, at this point, um, you know, a third of my life. Like, I'm, I guess I, I, I guess I have also hit that point where you've lived here for 10 years. And I think it's like every Austinite, when you hit 10 years, you're like, no matter when you got here, <laughs> when you hit 10 years, this place is fucking done. I have to move, yeah. right? <laughs> like, everybody in here has thought about moving. Uh, but but we haven't, and, like, we've been here this long. This has been home. It's been our home, and this has been our comedy scene for this yeah. long. Um, and so even, even as I find, like, oh, wow, I, I really... I just really did not expect to, to, to come back to a comedy scene that was like this. Um, there's still just that part of me that's like, I've been here for fucking 10 years. You've been here for a year. Let's like, <laughs> you know, a lot of people leave here. <laughs> like, we didn't. We, we've been here and this is, you know, we have roots here. And, and I feel like, yeah, I feel like, we love it, so we're going to be here. That's kind of hitting the nail on the head because pre pandemic, we're still a place where it's like, well, if you want to make a showbiz living, what are you doing here? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Like so, and 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 you know, this show and, and the label and stuff has has supplemented my income and, and stuff at the past. But it's always like, if I really wanted to hustle, I'd go to one of the two big places. And then by default, because Texas is just super chill about restrictions, mm-hmm. and Joe Rogan, we became like the mecca for people that are like, oh, cool, I can incubate for a while. And but if they really want to make it in showbiz, they're not going to live here forever, or they're not going to keep doing stand up for. Yeah, yeah. or it. or they'll get good and like uh, ingratiate themselves, like actually make an attempt socially to to become part of the broader Austin comedy scene, mm-hmm. or what I view as the broader Austin comedy scene. Like, again, if you're gonna live here, you're like, let's talk to that person a couple years from now, and then like nine years from now when they've been here for ten years and also want to leave, mm-hmm. but not because they think they're going to make it in L.A. or New York, because they're real Austinites. Mm-hmm. Uh. 
Yeah, I, when I, uh, because I see so many shows coming through and I see names that I've never heard before, and I will always look at, okay, who is who are Duncan and Brendan booking this week? Or some of these names that I'm seeing pop up from what I call this, you know, alt-alt scene, uh, <laughs> bubbling up. And every once in a while, I have seen a name, and I'm like, okay, well, that's, that's going to be somebody I, I'm going to try to talk to uh, just because they seem... Uh, it's great to be funny on stage, but I, a little bit to what you were alluding to, uh, Brendan, it's you have to figure out how to work socially within the scene too. Like, yeah. don't be, a, don't be a dick. You know, that's kind of a, a I don't know. I think that's a good trait to, <laughs> to have. <laughs> and you know, I'd like to interview people that are not dicks. That's kind of my my goal. Yeah, I, I don't want to boil it down to like one like specific choice of like, are you vaccinated or not, to be like the test. Mm -hmm. But conveniently for us, like we don't have to pick and choose that way. I can't. I I can literally cannot tell you the number of times like someone has like cold messaged me or whatever. Uh, and specifically, one comes to mind that people will cold message and be like, "Hey, can I get up?" At your show, oh god, and be like, okay, uh, well, like I don't know who you are. Hi, I'm Brendan. Uh, also, you know, hey, uh, our venue requires proof of vaccine right now, yeah. and uh, perusing your timeline, uh, the <laughs> the memes say you passed, uh, passed on doing our show. Yeah, so that's convenient for us. Yeah. But uh, I think there's a lot of people who are probably out there doing like mics consistently and doing some of those other shows. People who've kind of come into um, you know, the the kind of, I don't know, is it fair to call it a secondary comedy scene? I, 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 yeah, I, minor I, leagues. I, <laughs> I don't mean to imply anything other than like kind of this other, this, this other yeah. comedy scene who came by it honestly and naturally and are just trying to do comedy and want to do it. Mm -hmm. And and if those people have like the, the very basic social skills necessary to function in the world, they'll make their way into, yeah. you know, they'll, 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 they'll cross over and, and find the right cohort. I mean, like, it's that thing, like, also when you're just a new comic, you know, you have to kind of, like, self-select what your cohort is going to be, you know? There's a lot of people doing mics, and uh, when you're, like, a new comic, you know, you should just kind of find the people that you think are funniest, that you think are cool people, and join them. And maybe maybe you're all assholes, but guess what? If you're all assholes and you're in your own little asshole pod, yeah. you can have your own little asshole scene. Yeah. You're with your people. You're in the right group, you know? Right. And and if and if you want to do shows like ours, if you want to do some of the other shows that have been established in Austin for a while longer, then then you're gonna display the necessary you're 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 gonna meet people and you're gonna you're gonna learn kind of, you know, here are the here are the here are the, the things you need to do to be a member in good standing of a community. It's like you can still <laughs> You can still do our show if you do asshole scene shows, mm -hmm. but don't be an asshole in our green room. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. Or yeah. our stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. There, there, there have definitely been. I should also say there are comics who have been like established Austin comics whom we associate with, you know, the pre-pandemic Austin comedy scene who do those shows regularly, and uh, and it doesn't necessarily mean anything, you know, terrible about them. Again, everybody, you know, needs stage time. Like mm -hmm. uh, when when I say like I don't feel the need to go to mics that much, it's because I can open this show doing new stuff. And like, not everybody runs the show. Not everybody's as lucky to have guaranteed stage time, you know? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> being where we are and with the uncertainty that like all of the broader societal conditions bring toward everyone's individual lives, if you need to go to that one mic that's full of assholes, well, because that's the mic you need to go to because that's the night you have off from work or whatever, like, you know, go do your thing, you know? So there's, there's, there's gonna be more cross-pollination, but it really definitely does seem like the new people like are purposefully, in a lot of ways, just doing their own thing. Like, not really making that much of that. It has not been like an overwhelming amount trying to trying to ingratiate themselves in the existing scene. And maybe that's because a lot of them are new and they just want to do their own thing. And maybe it's because a lot of them are assholes and know it's not going to work because they won't get vaccinated. But, mm. you know, yeah. we can't control that. No. And we'll probably be here longer than them. So <laughs> who cares? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll wait them out. You yeah. know, I'm not Time worried about it. That is our entire, comedy. literally comedy. our entire strategy in, in like comedy world at this point, Doug and I, is just like, we got nothing better to do but keep fucking doing this forever. Yeah. So our answer to anything is just, we'll just, we'll just keep doing it every yeah. week and it'll, it'll all, 20 years from now, none of this will fucking matter. <laughs> 
Ah, oh, isn't that the truth? Ah. Oh. Well, and then we'll all be dead. Hey. Oh, doesn't it sound great, folks? Oh, yeah. this crowd, this crowd cannot wait to die. society go ahead and collapse? Uh, come on. All right. Well, we are uh, closing in on our end time, and uh, the only, th- I think a couple of things that I wanted to, to mention is, you know, last year, Brendan, when we were talking about, you know, is Joe Rogan going to make an impact on the scene? The, um, you know, I... I think yes and no because he has his you know his followers and his his legions uh, of fans. Not yeah, it's not him with, specifically. Yeah. It's him it's and some that, other cultural figures right. that have become kind of a magnet like, for a yeah. chunk of the culture yeah. to, to be well, drawn. I feel here. like but, he had an impact on his cloud of dirty brings with him, like the peanuts kid. <laughs> Yeah, if Pigpen if Pig, if Pigpen eats more beans, that cloud's gonna smell different. <laughs> but my what I I want to articulate is that the sign of a big scene is that we have these different pockets, and you know, by him coming here and and finding people that are willing to relocate because of him in whatever reason, then that just means we've got this other pocket of 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 a comedy scene, and it's just. A symptom of the bigger uh, scene that we just have different uh, groups that are represented, and it, it's, it is a sign of growth for this. Like we know, all of us know how much bigger Austin mm-hmm. feels, how much taller the buildings are getting, all that. Again, every ten years, it feels like a new city, seemingly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th- but but we don't necessarily feel it socially. Like we don't necessarily feel it in terms of like in terms of having another, you know, para social like side scene sidle up alongside your social scene. Yeah. So uh, I think that's that's the feeling that we underrated. The sensation yeah. of understanding, oh, this is what it means when a thousand people move here every, you know, six days or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the thing for me about what's going to happen, what big thing is gonna happen in the in the next hopefully months is the return of Cap City and how will that change? Because I know some of the comics that I talked to who weren't actually comics, but like Rob Morris of the Romo Room, he was very adamant about the the the, the system of how Cap City would book its its mic was you know maybe not the best, <laughs> and so he created this other thing that got him panned. But ultimately, he built something that that people migrated to. It's like okay, now with Cap City coming back albeit with new ownership, you know, how is that going to reorient the scene or is that just going to be okay? Now we have this other new pocket that's an old pocket that's come back in a different form. And it's like, okay, well, that's just another sign of the, the growing scene. I, you know, I, I will say that I am excited for Cap City to come back. And mm-hmm. I say that as somebody who uh, has gone through kind of various, like, um, I don't know. There have been times when I've been like, I don't know, fuck all comedy clubs. Like, <laughs> there, like there's, there's, there's just like the the kind of like DIY punk in me that just yeah. thinks that like you guys are in the fucking chicken wing business. Like, you don't know shit about comedy. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be on your corporate butthole festival. Who gives a Honestly. shit? No, but like, but that, but I, but but like, I say that to say that's like a petulant, like shitty part of me mm-hmm. in some ways. And I realize Cap coming back is like. Well, that is like the first com- like big comedy club I ever played at. You know, like there, it's it is a special play yeah. thing to the established Austin comedy scene. As much as it is about selling chicken wings, as much as anything else, like uh, you know the new partnership with JFL, good for good for everybody, mm-hmm. I, I guess. But I didn't even feel like oh that's that's great, like because maybe I'll get to be on a bigger festival. I, yeah, I just I'm really I'm glad to have Cap coming back. Because I know it's a part of our established scene. Mm-hmm. It, it, it is. It is something that is going to be. I mean, it's a super important venue. Um, it's important to be able to bring back that level of comedy show. What we have right now is, you know, Dave Chappelle drops in and announces three days of the Paramount or whatever, and we don't really have anything that's comparable to that. Like having a an A level club with a big room. Um, I'm excited. Like I've heard nothing but great things about the management. But I just want to say that like I don't think it's going to be its own separate new pocket. It's it's that is part of that continuum through line of Austin comedy. Mm-hmm. Cap City has been a part. Of, has been 
you know, a much bigger, more important part of the fabric of the Austin comedy community than we certainly have been in just 10 years. Uh, and like every single thing that I've I've ever thought about, like yeah, like we'll, we'll probably all ask those new people. The Cap City people th- can think the same exact thing about our show, you oh, know. Yeah. So they're 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 an important part of the community that I'm glad to have back. And in a lot of ways, I'm looking at it like kind of you know, hey, I hope I have a new beginning with these folks. And I'm certainly excited to see all the, the regular management. Like yeah. they're all they're all good folks. And uh, and uh, it doesn't feel like there's. I don't know, it just doesn't feel like there can be any kind of like oppositional feeling between like the big viable club in town and the big shows that like develop the talent that can work the club and host there and feature there. Like they're not gonna, they wouldn't survive if there was not a comedy scene outside of, of Cap City. And Cap City makes like doing comedy a thing that a lot of people want to do. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's really important to have that back in the ecosystem. I will say that like, after 10 years, you get kind of tired of these, like, questions about, like, how will this affect the scene? What? I just mean, like, in, in, in the sense okay. of, like... Happy anniversary, no, 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 Comedy Wham. Thank you. No, 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 no. No. Uh, but just, like, Cap City has a certain number of shows per year that local people can host or feature mm-hmm. for. They have a certain number of Moon Tower spots and maybe more with JFL now. But they will always have a certain capacity to, like, boost local talent and put it in front of like what you might consider a mainstream showbiz industry like Last Comic Standing Audition or JFL Audition. Yep. A few of those happen a year and it is the same few that were happening in 2011. And it doesn't, the the fluctuation of how much, how many comedians live here don't really affect their capacity to do it. So in the larger sense, and the pandemic affects all this too, like the more movie industry moves here, the more like Rooster Teeth is a, is a going concern where a lot of people we know can make their living. The more Austin grows, the bigger the scene will grow. But this is like, how does Joe Rogan affect mm. Cap City's standing in the comedy industry? It doesn't, because yep. he'll play there sometimes because they know he can sell it out. But right. they don't care about the people that come here to be friends with him. They care about people that come to their open mic, which has a limited number of spots. Yeah, yeah and, and they have to fill that role. They, they have to fill yeah. that role as intermediary to the broader industry in a way that, you know, shows like ours can never do. Uh, just we're not, like, the, it's, it's, it's the step between being independent and DIY and being tied into a broader industry, a mm-hmm. corporate industry. And... Honestly, like personally, I don't give a fuck about like trying to make it in show business. Like, I don't. Do, <laughs> I, I don't I, that's not why I do. If that's why I did comedy, I would have quit comedy by now. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I, I love com. I love doing comedy. I love doing what we do. Um, and even that being said, I still, I still want to have a good relationship with those folks because they're, they're It doesn't have to be one or the other. Like, it always has to be one feeding upward into giving people new opportunities and letting them, you know, learn new things about themselves as comics, getting experience as comics, um, and having a chance to step into other roles. And like, all of that is what makes Austin. Like, I mean, more power to every other comedy scene in America. Like, truly, obviously, Chicago, in Boston, San Francisco, great histories. Denver, fantastic town with a great scene right now. So many great comedy scenes across America, but they don't all have that intermediary step between just DIY local scene and a broader entertainment industry. And Austin's going to be the city outside of New York and LA that has that. Yeah. And Cap is going to be a huge part of that. And um, Moon Tower and the Paramount are going to be a huge part of that. Yeah. And uh, honestly, more power to them. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that they're glad that they're back and, and, and glad that, that Austin gets to have that still. Yeah, very good. Well said, well said. All right, well, we're going to wrap. Oh, gosh, that oh. went long. OK, Q&A, any questions? Oh, please. Oh. Marcus? Marcus? <laughs> Everybody knows Marcus. Yeah. Happy anniversary, Marcus. <laughs> it's, uh, so Sure Thing used to, at the show, at Sure Thing, every show got recorded. It's back at the job. Oh, back at the job, right? Mm-hmm. It would get recorded. And then occasionally you'd get a CD that was like, hey, this was a good night at, at the show. What's, what happened to that? Is that ever going to come back? I, I will say, if you enjoyed the Sure Thing live compilations, uh, the very first thing we ever put out was uh, Sure Thing Live, which was, what, 14? Yeah, 14. For, for 14 comics who were kind of just of our cohort and just doing their thing. Uh, if you enjoyed that, then, then we tricked you, because we, didn't, we did not 
record every single show. Uh, in fact, like Sure Thing became like the the old spot at Austin Java became a place that some comics requested to record records at. Mm-hmm. Um, but we only ever did we only ever did kind of the more like record a whole show with multiple comics thing twice. We did it for that first comp. And we did it for our very last show at that Austin Java. And we sat on the audio and it's good sets and I mean, I guess I, I guess I still want to put it out at some point, but yeah. But that, but that was right before we went on hiatus, and and there's a million reasons why there wasn't like, That's like a if, product. If, if we're that. not doing our weekly show, we don't know how to get a goddamn thing done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, honestly, yeah, like yeah, having having ten months off between venues like made it hard for us to do. So when we in came back here, we were like, yeah, too much time is bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but there but but that being said, like you you brought it, so you asked about like recording of a show, and there has been talk about about new recording projects here at Fallout mm-hmm. being able to do that with sure thing here. The main reason there hasn't been like more proper movement on the record side of putting out comedy recordings has just been all the COVID uncertainty. Yeah, um, like you know we what what. Boy, I don't want to call them out, but I'll do it anyway because she's headlining our show this weekend. She mentioned it. On yeah, Facebook. one of one of the like like the last great night we had in Austin, Con- like literally one of the last ones, was Avery's Avery Moore's uh, recording at Spider House in January of 2020, and it, the vibe was so good. Was anybody there? A couple people were there. It was such a great show, and uh, and sometimes I walk by. It's now called the ballroom and painted black. <laughs> Ugh. And I think about that pre-pandemic night, and then now I'm like, boy, it's we're in a bad movie. Yeah, man. <laughs> but but the, 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 there's a reason that hasn't come out, and and part of it is just like the like I mean I I know Avery lost her job during pandemic, and like we lost our jobs, and there's yeah. a million reasons why the recording projects haven't had as much traction. We're now trying to get kind of back into our footing. We do have some planned. And we're just kind of waiting on everything, all the factors to line up to make it viable to actually do the recordings. Yeah. So we're, we're doing, I mean, the live shows are still really good, and I'm sure the audio would sound good if we just, you know, did a full crowd here. Um, but it's, it's, it's just, it's hard to, to spin ourselves back up to, like, full momentum of, like, the release schedule that we were on, putting stuff out, when it still just seems so up and down on if people are going to be able to go out that week, you know? Yeah, we're cooking something up. Yeah, there, there's there's a there's a lot of things on the on the on simmering on back burners at the moment, and uh, and yeah, and I, I guess yeah, we're we're I'm waiting for us to be able to kind of like go full throttle with it all again for sure. All right, well, uh, my my uh, closing bit, as you know, you ready for your your closing question? Yep. One word to describe your future, and don't look in the at the board. I'm gonna make you go first. Ah, oh. <laughs> uh, fuck! There were so many words <laughs> on that cloud. Just don't choose. Definitely don't choose optimistic. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what to stay away from: bright, exciting, hopeful. <laughs> Anything that's big on that, don't do. I feel like tone is important here, but I'll go with like a. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> that was two words. Yeah. Why not? I'll put a dash. Sure. You know. <laughs> You know, I I know this is the closing question, and just I just really didn't think about it because I wanted I, I wanted something to come naturally on the spot. Um, the future is female. <laughs> <laughs> That's what came out. I don't know. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. Sounds like you're at the wrong oh. open mic, pal. Yeah. Rogan's Theater is like that a way. Nerve. Get down in the. Well, that no, but like, but now that I said that, I know that like six years from now, we're gonna have a word cloud. That's gonna be a tiny little female. Because I'm the only feminist. I'm the only one. The only one. In America and the broader world. Most comics are too busy thinking about themselves. That's right. Yeah. Well, that is a wrap on Comedy Wham! Live with Duncan Carson and Brendan K. O'Grady. We hope you've enjoyed hearing. Uh, sorry. We hope you've enjoyed. I keep thinking I'm going to be able to re-edit uh, this on audio. No, but here you are commenting on it further. Yeah. I know. But it's always funnier when you got explain the joke. Yeah. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed learning about how Duncan and Brendan got to be the comedic geniuses that you heard today just as much as I have. Tell us where we can find you on social media and uh, promote your shows and projects. 
Uh, well, you can always go to SureThingRecords.com to see what's going on there. And at SureThingATX uh, on all social media. Yeah. And uh, the, 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 the basketball and politics show that I'm doing with uh, Robert Segovia is called Soft City Rockers. And it's on Spotify and everywhere else. Yeah, just follow me on Twitter. A oh, Curry. you're not doing the podcast anymore? <laughs> not plugging. It's actually, I'm, it's, I mean, we're switching it up, but it's not interesting to get into right now. Oh, no. <laughs> R.I.P. Oh, you can obviously trace either one of us back through all the sure thing stuff and find what we're up to as well. So. R.I.P. Yet another iteration of Duncan and <laughs> Cameron we, talking to we, each other. You know what? Between the two of us, it's like five or six podcasts we have started and failed to keep going. <laughs> So give it up for Val doing yeah, but like, Yeah, but just like one for me. Yeah. Comedy web, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look for the article about uh, tonight's episode and the po- and uh, and the podcast to be released on comedywham.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. Uh, I don't know something else. Maybe listen to past interviews on iTunes. Review us, and a huge thank you to Fallout Theater for giving us the opportunity to do this live. Thank you to Dustin Svalock for recording. Uh, Matt Farley is of Motor Media, and he's the music that you heard in the intro at the beginning. And thanks to my comedy wham partners in crime, Richard and Laura, who could not be here, and uh, that one. <laughs> Uh, this has been Comedy Wham Live with Brendan K. O'Grady and Duncan Carson. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny. Thank you, Duncan, Thanks, Brendan. Thanks, and keep on whamming. <laughs>